You'll find a lot of videos out there that tell you, train your virtual assistant to find products. And I'm here to tell you, don't do that. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss why you should instead stick to what you understand and know, and then look at the data. But don't look at the data first because that's what ends up creating fidget spinners being sold on your account. There are countless tools that you can use to do product research, such as Helium 10, Zonguru, Jungle Scout, and many others out there. And I do recommend having one of those tools on staff. I even have a promo code for 20% off Helium 10 here. Just go to myamazonguy.com slash H10. Click on the get 20% off for six months link right there. You'll end up buying me a Chipotle burrito if you do that, and I thank you in advance. But the reason why I'm shooting this video is to discourage reliance upon data to start your product selection. And I have several videos out there where I walk through how to use data to select products or narrow things down. And you can check out links to those videos here. But before you go and do this, let me advise you to take a second and think carefully about why this is not the ideal way to do product research and product selection. If you are an Amazon seller in one particular category, let's say you're in wine glasses, and you hire a virtual assistant paying them anywhere from three to $10 an hour overseas, and you say, hey, go find me products. They're gonna go into these tools and they're gonna start to select items based on criteria you give them. Hey, I want something small and light because you don't wanna ship big overstock boxes or pay logistics fees. Everybody's doing that, by the way hey, I, I want something that's between $15 and $25. Okay, cool. Well, there's millions of those products. That narrows it down a little bit. Uh, and you could go down this list, filter after filter. Hey, I want something in home and goods, and I, I want this, this, and that. And I want something that only has X number of reviews, but also has X number of impressions. And then la -di -da, the the filter's going to spit you out a product selection. Well, well, here's the problem with that. Everybody is doing the exact same thing. And what happens is everybody launches in those niches at the same time, and it creates an overproduction of goods. And the concept of supply and demand overcorrects itself in a matter of like six to eight weeks, and it's brutal. So I like to use the fidget spinner uh, philosophy because that's exactly what happened when all of a sudden fidget spinners became the most viral thing ever. And everybody who was an Amazon seller wannabe, not an expert, went out and bought thousands of fidget spinners and added them to their account and was like, oh, this is going to be the next big thing. Only to find out like less than two months later, everybody had started selling fidget spinners and the price dropped like a rock. You couldn't differentiate your product from somebody else. You had no brand story to back up your item. You were just trying to be a re retailer without trying to understand what the consumer needed compared to the available demand in that category. So it was dead on arrival. There are brands out there, you could take like, uh, I don't know, Dude Wipes. The CEO of Dude Wipes, Sean Riley, is basically a shit poster in chief, right? Like people are buying his product, not because it's any better than a freaking wipe. It's just hilarious to watch this dude do his work. I mean, post after post where this dude is racking up comments about how he wipes butts for a living. It's funny stuff, right? Like this dude has created a brand, a cult brand and has, you know, thousands of followers. I actually have more followers than him, by the way, but that's besides the point. The fact is that there is something behind what he's discussing that resonates with people. So when you find his products on Amazon, you see thousands of reviews. These guys have some of the top products in health and household. You're seeing on screen right now a top 729 product, an 1800 in health and household, 49,000 reviews, just immensely deep, right? The product is probably not superior. It's just a great brand. And, and People appreciate that, like, hey, this is for men, right? Nobody had catered to this audience before. So there's a huge brand cult following for Dude Wipes. Now, if, if I was Sean Riley trying to think about my next product, I wouldn't start with the data and then say, hey, we're going to start selling something else men like. We're going to sell them, I don't know, pocket knives, right? Instead, 
what Sean should do or Dude Wipe should do is talk to their consumers and, and ask them questions about what is it that you need that we're not offering yet? What is it that you don't like that we offer? What is it that you want more of that we do offer? Like those three basic customer centric questions go a long way. There's other things you could do. You could stay on the Amazon listing and look at frequently bought together. Now, obviously there's gonna be a bunch of dude stuff linked up here, but if we click on enough dude products, I bet you we could find one or three where they have a non-dude product being bought together. All right, I'm 0 for 2 so far. Let's look at one more here. And I'm 0 for 3. But let's say <laughs> that we were looking at a product and we saw it frequently bought together and it was not your brand, right? And let's see if I can find an example. All right, I'm going to go over to my brand, Age of Sage. I sell some artisan men's soap, right? Uh, maybe dude wipes will buy me out someday. Who knows? Uh, but here we have frequently bought out Fraught spot together, Crate 61, men's bar soap in my age is age. I don't know why people want to try three different soap brands at the same time, but they do. Data's present, right? Let's go to another product. Same thing. And the funniest thing here is that somebody's buying my same product, which I have the same exact product with two different packaging, uh, and they're buying two of those at the same time. <laughs> Who knows why? Maybe they want to try the more expensive artisan version which is just basically not boxed. That is the difference between these two products. It actually cost me more to make this one, ironically, which is why we charge more and it's artisan, right? Different customer centric things going on. But like, this is just one example of many of what you could do to figure out what products to expand into. You could use the frequently bought together expansion. There's also tools like Smart Scout, which offers a web of product connections. I'm actually linking to this video right here, a Smart Scout way to research on Amazon products. We'll link to that right here if you wanna check this out. And in this video, which I'm holding my son Adam there, uh, I walk through how they have data web mapping products next to each other. And you could use this for additional product expansion. It's basically the frequently bought together on steroids and it allows you to see like, oh, somebody bought a chess clock. I'm a chess player, so this is cool. They might also buy a chess set. And you can see how people are clicking and buying cursory accessories and products like thus. So that's a pretty cool thing you can check out as well. But the most important thing you need to do as a brand owner on Amazon as it relates to product development is stick to what you know. And what I mean by this is, if you have some of the best world knowledge, you're a world enthusiast on mountain climbing, and you have been to Mount Everest, and you know everything there is to know about mountain hiking boots, and ice picks, and rope, and everything in between, if you started to sell dental floss, and you weren't a dentist, and you had that kind of knowledge, I would think you're crazy because you should stick to what you understand. You could be your own customer. If you are your first customer as a customer avatar and you can sell your own products to yourself, do you have any idea the level of expertise that that brings to the product and that develops that product and it allows you to communicate with the manufacturer better? You know what questions to ask. You know if the product is good or bad. And quite frankly, you could use the product and take pictures of yourself using the product and become the customer avatar. And I talk about customer avatars all the time. You can watch my rant right here. And I love customer uh, avatar conversations because you need to showcase one single type of demographic, all in on male or female, all in on young or old, all in on that particular look and feel of that demographic, like the, the type of magazine that they read, the type of website that they would view, and, uh, and help aspire, show the nice version of that demographic, of course, but go all in on it because you wouldn't sell cat food to a dog and, and, and show dog pictures with cat food being sold. You wouldn't sell a treat that could be consumed by both cats and dogs at the same time, even though it's probably fine, right? Like both probably appreciate it, but you're much significantly better off having a cat landing page and a dog landing page and never mixing these two because the, the likelihood of somebody liking both cats and dogs is like 80 times 
less likely than finding somebody who is an all cat enthusiast or an all dog enthusiast. So because of this, by being your own customer avatar and understanding what they're looking for and sticking to what you know, you can go a mile deep and an inch wide, an inch wide and a mile deep. And that keeps the surface knowledge that is far superior to the data. Now, now you might be saying to yourself, well, cool, I'm a world expert on apples, but I have no idea how to compete with the apple slicers of the world. Well, we even have examples for that. Zuli Kitchen uh, is, is one of the biggest kitchen brands on Amazon. And they even went into the markets that were oversaturated, the apple slicers, the uh, garlic presses, and they have top 10, top 100 products. Look at that one, a number 100 in all of kitchen. And we could go to the, pretty much any subcategory in kitchen and probably find one of their products in the top 20 of that subcategory. And they stuck to what they knew and understand. They went in and improved a product, right? You, you hear about stories like the Jungle Scout story where they took marshmallow sticks and simply extended the stick and then had a million dollar product, right? Taking a product category and servicing it and giving it something that is a little bit above and beyond can make a big difference. I've got one of these Zuli uh, metal two-in-one lemon lime squeezers in my own house. And I gotta tell you, this was a game changer when this sort of product came out compared to how lemons were squeezed before. And it was just amazing to see that. And this is number one bestseller in manual juicers, 40,000 reviews, right? So it is possible to enter crowded markets and, and put forth a superior product. Now, is it scary? It, you know, do you have to buy a mold? Do you have to worry about patents? And, you know, maybe. Even if you do get a patent, the Chinese are still going to rip you off anyway. And it's just a matter of months. It used to be you get like a product shelf life of one and a half, two years on Amazon. Today, it's like six months, if that, before you get ripped off 17 different ways. So in my opinion, I don't worry about the patents. I don't worry about the, the knockoffs. I just try and create a brand that is so powerful that you have a following and you service that customer and you, you create that cult following and that will be superior, right? Like I, I hit this home with the Dude Wipes brand where they are so powerful on this topic, even though it's super easy to create wipes, and to replicate their product and maybe even have a superior product for even a lesser price, these guys aren't going anywhere. They, they, and, and you know, they even talk about how they got rid of their D2C brand and they stuck to the retailers and Amazon and Walmart. And um, you, you can see Sean talking about that on LinkedIn all over the place. Um, but it's really interesting because, because they stuck to what they understood and they serviced and they became their own customer and they became shit posters in chief, so to speak. They were able to build this cult following and, and it's so much more powerful than simply going to a product research tool and then hoping that somebody else isn't gonna use the exact same filters as you, because they are, they really are. So stick to what you know. My name is Stephen Pope, I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And if you have any Amazon question, go to myamazonguy.com, click into our Magi tool or Magi, I'm not sure how we're gonna pronounce it yet. And you can come in here and type any question, like how to conduct product research and you'll get an answer built on my content. It will always link you to a YouTube video. It'll give you specific answers in my, my knowledge set and cool information like this. So here you go. Here's how to do product research. Here's 11 steps and a video where we do it. How do we start research on YouTube? And it goes straight into a timestamp in the video and it shows you exactly how you could do product research like this. So pretty cool tool. This is all free. Go check it out at myamazonguy.com and, you know, if you want, hire us as well. We'll see you guys later.